Hey Crossgate, it's time for our midweek update, but I was fixing to get started and I heard a racket. And, and these fine gentlemen were decided to, uh, that they were gonna help the Backpack Buddies and Faye Pittman. <laughs> no, she no, she won't. She will not let you even have a can of corn. I, I, I've tried. <laughs> um, always something going on here at, at Crossgates. Um, a lot of good servants, a lot of good people who want to help. Um, I'm coming to you from the kitchen, and I um, want to give an update on something. Charles Wally, um, after um, our Methodist men meeting this, uh, this last Sunday, realized how good it was to have food and the smell of bacon and eggs and, um, and the fellowship has said that he wants to spearhead the return of the biscuit patrol. And so that's our first announcement this week is Charles Wally, um, one of our lay leaders who is keenly interested in that kind of hospitality and how we do church. And so what he's doing is he's going to be calling up um, all those who used to serve uh, in that way, but he's really asking me to announce to y'all um, it's not a, an every Sunday commitment. It is a regular commitment, but just a way to serve and offer hospitality to our church members, to our guests, and a moment of just being able to sit out there together and reconnect. And so um, y'all give Charles Wally a call. I thought about posting his, his phone number in the video description. I'd rather not uh, do that to him in case um, there's a, a, a program out there that would harvest that and put him on a spam call list. So Charles, if you're seeing this, I'm not going to do that to you. But y'all call Faith or call Charles and we'll get you connected with him. I think that's a really, really um, important indicator of our church getting back to, to those kind of uh, ministries together. Um, another announcement, uh, May Gary called me and wanted me to say uh, thank you once again. She has um, totaled 68 birthday cards, and um, she's honestly just very um, overwhelmed and pleased by that. Um, one final announcement for me is, um, I didn't know this, but it's apparently Pastor Appreciation Month, and I've had people bring by cookies and gift cards and notes, the notes of appreciation probably speak more to my heart than than the cookies do and uh but just know that uh, thank you um i'm i'm proud to be your pastor i'm 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 eager for us as crossgates to to grow in christ together to become who we are in christ together and um and, and i'm humbled to be your pastor and i enjoy serving and loving y'all because of the way that you serve and love one another and me um our psalm for the day is an interesting psalm it's a psalm that we oftentimes read or we only hear the beginning of and it leaves us questioning and wondering. And it, it's the time that we hear it read is when Jesus is on the cross and you hear him say, um, Eli, Eli, lamo salatani, um, which is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And a lot of us think that Jesus is crying out for um, out of an anguish where he in that moment is 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 there all alone and that God has abandoned him. Well, I want to acknowledge that the, re the death and pain and loss that he was suffering was real. But I also want us to understand that any time um, in the past somebody wanted us to quote an entire psalm or to remember an entire psalm, they would begin by reading the first line. And I believe that's what Jesus was doing. And I think what was going on there was that Jesus was, yes, acknowledging the deep, deep, deep sorrow of, of what it is taking to redeem all of us. So he does cry out, Psalm 22, verse 1, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from the words of my groaning. But if we stop there, it, 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 it says something that we don't actually believe. Do we really believe that, that God sent Jesus and they were fully united in their purpose? And that God said that you can trust, I'm sorry, that Jesus said you can trust his father. And in one moment in time when he needed him most, are we really saying that his father in heaven completely abandoned his son? No, that's not what we're saying. But we're saying, though, that the, the depths of which God would go to save us was truly, truly amazing. But if we keep reading in here, we do hear that the psalmist is continuing to cry out. I do cry out day and night, and, and, and I don't hear an answer, and, and I'm crying out. 
Yet you are enthroned on high. You are the Holy One, and we'll sing praise to you. Our fathers put their trust in you, and I will put my trust in you. We cried out to you, and you saved us. I'll cry out to you, and you will save me. Further down, this is Psalm 22, verse 9. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help me. We keep going down. The psalmist here is saying, there's many wild animals that have surrounded me. I feel alone. I feel cut off. I can count my bones. My enemies are gloating over me. They're casting lots for my clothes. Verse 19 of Psalm 22. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my strength, come quickly to help. Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of lions. Save me from the horns of the wild ox. Now we're starting to see a shift in this psalm. And I think it's a shift that we all need to acknowledge. You're being brutally honest with God and how we feel, but acknowledging, wait a second now, you've always been faithful. Oh God, you've always been faithful. I am in the pit of despair, but I know, I know that you're going to come. So this is Psalm 22, verse 22. I will declare your name to my brothers in the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. Verse 27. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. The very last verse of this psalm. They will proclaim his righteousness to the people yet unborn, for he has done it. I would encourage all to pick up Psalm 22 today or this week and read through it. Read through it several times. It's important that we understand the psalm itself, David's true um, hurt and pain and loss and, and fear that he was experiencing. But I believe that we also need to understand why Jesus quoted it, why Jesus grabbed a hold of it in that moment there on the cross before his death. And what was he actually crying out? He was crying out that God was doing something amazing and it hurt, but God was going to do it and future generations would praise God for it. So Crossgates, I see Christ in you. Hold on to each other. Hold on to a time until we can get back and we can start messing the kitchen up again. But if there's a way for you to serve and engage, um, don't fall into despair. Don't fall into that, why have you forsaken me? Come back, come back and um, share a biscuit. Come back into this kitchen and help serve one another. Um, this is our moment. This is our time to come back and be safe and we're doing it. But it's time for us to regain and rejoice in what God has done and is doing in us. The suffering has been real. The separation has been great. But God is greater. And what God is doing among us is something that we will remember from generation to generation. I love you, Crossgates. Stay at it. I'll see you Sunday.